Hello YouTube! If you have followed my previous video on how to make a basic checkbook register in Excel, or if you've purchased the basic checkbook spreadsheet from my website, here's a great follow-up video on how you can easily see a report or categorization of your bank transactions. And here's what we will build together. This worksheet will look at your transactions and show a total for each category, and we'll also add these handy buttons called slicers that make it easy to see your totals by year or month. So as a quick example, if I click on the year 2024, I now just see the entries that are for that particular year versus clicking on 2025. And now I see the expenses and income uh, for that particular year. And I'll just click a button here to clear that filter. So one of the reasons I love using a spreadsheet for bank account management is that you're also learning how to use one of the best tools ever created for the personal computer, a spreadsheet. And Microsoft Excel is still the best spreadsheet program on the planet. In this video, we're going to use a feature called a pivot table. It's a wonderful feature. Okay, let's get started. Here in my sample checkbook spreadsheet, I just have some, some random transactions over the course of several months. This is all uh, fake data, but at least gives you an idea of uh, how this is gonna work. So I've got you know a register one and a register two uh, worksheet. Uh, currently, I'm only using the uh, first register worksheet. So our first step in this process will be to visit the, the insert menu here in Excel. So when we click on insert, we'll see a button here for pivot table. I'm just going to click it there on the top part of that button for pivot table. And it automatically realizes that I want to do this based on the current table uh, that I was in. And we want this pivot table to go into a new worksheet. So we're not having to change anything here. We just click on the OK button. And we're now ready to start building our pivot table. Uh, so uh, what we want to do is we, we'd like to have our categories, you know, coming down the, the side. Those are the rows. And then we'd like the dollar amounts to, you know, also uh, be beside that. So here are our list of pivot fields, which are all coming from the checkbook register spreadsheet. And we're interested in this category. So I'm just going to click and I'm going to hold my mouse down on that category column and drag it down to this rows box and let go. And as soon as I did that, you know, it's automatically showing uh, those entries right there. Of course, actually, I could have just clicked once on the category thing, and it would have done the same thing. Okay, next, we're going to drag this withdrawal uh, entry or field. We're going to drag it down to the values box and let go. And immediately, we're now starting to see some, some information in here. We've got a uh, discretionary category, food and dining category, along with uh, some dollar amounts. Now, one of the things that I like to uh, very quickly do is uh, change a little bit of this. Uh, instead of having it say the sum of withdrawal, if we click on this little arrow right there, you're going to see a pop-up here for value field settings. So we're going to click on that. And we're going to change this custom name. Uh, personally, I'd not a fan of seeing it say some withdrawal, so I'm just going to uh, wipe that out. And I like to like it to say uh, expenses, so I'm just going to type that in. But before I click OK, I'm going to click on this number format button because I have my personal preferences. I just like to see this in a currency format. So you can choose currency. Maybe you like the accounting format, uh, whatever you like. Uh, just uh, go ahead and uh, make your choice and then click the OK button when you're done. All right, this is starting to, to look pretty good, but we want to go a little bit further here. You know, we'd also like to see this maybe uh, broken out by subcategory. So again, I'm going to use that drag technique, but it's super important when I let go. So I'm going to click, hold down on subcategory, come down to here, and you'll see a sort of a, green, a faint green line. So depending on where we want it to appear within the pivot tables, that's where we want to let go. So I actually want it to be below category. So I'm going to let go at this point. And now we see those subcategories that are under each major category. Uh, for example, under food and dining, we've got coffee, dining out, groceries, uh, etc. Now, had I uh, uh, drug that and let go up here, well, it looks uh, pretty messy and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So one of the things I also like about pivot tables, don't worry about hurting anything. Um, in fact, you could even just uh, like start over, delete this, this sheet and, and, and try again. But I'm just going to click, drag, and drop underneath category to get back to where we need it to be. Okay, so we're getting a little closer now. Notice that we've got things like salary, side income showing up here. But those are really not expenses, and there's no, no dollar amount showing up there, right? So here's what we need to do for that. Uh, we've got a 
column or field called type, and that knows it's if, if it's an income or an expense. And we're going to actually make that a filter choice. So I'm going to click and drag this type to the filter box, let go. And then up here where it says type all, we're just going to click up there, click on expense and OK. And now we are truly focused in on just the expenses. Now, a couple other things that you can uh, play around with as far as like the, the look and the feel of this. So as long as our mouse is somewhere within this pivot table, you'll have choices up here for pivot table analyze and design. Under design, you can choose your favorite colors. So you've got a little drop down here you can click on. Um, you know, I personally like the, uh, the this blue. But again, as your mouse hovers over these different areas, you can see like a preview. So, but I'm going to go ahead and click on this, this medium uh, blue entry there. Uh, so that's looking better. Uh, the other thing is that I, I like a little bit more white space or blank lines in here. So up under here, there's a button for blank rows. And we're going to pick this choice for insert blank line after each item. So I personally just think it makes it a little bit more readable. All right, now to finish off a few little visual tweaks uh, on this, again, as long as your mouse is somewhere in this pivot table, if we visit the menu choice called Pivot Table Analyze, we have uh, some buttons here for whether or not to show the plus and minus. So you notice these tiny little plus and minus uh, buttons that are there. I personally just like to turn those off. So if I click that button, it, it turns those off. Also, uh, field headers are currently turned on. Uh, so you notice like, where it says row labels. If I click that, uh, it makes that go away. Again, just kind of cleans this up a bit. Now, as the next step, I want to add some nice buttons for slicing or filtering. They call it slicer buttons. And I like to have those on the left, So, uh, but I need some room. So what I'm going to do is tell Excel to insert a couple blank columns uh, to the left. So if I use my mouse and, and do a right click on that letter A, so it's got to be pointing at that A, do a right click. There's a pop-up menu. I'm going to click on that insert choice. I'm going to do that one more time. I can either right click on A or B, doesn't matter. But right click on uh, that column heading. Choose insert and uh, just give me a couple blank columns because again, I'm going to put those slicer buttons over here. Now, before I can put those slicer buttons, I got to click one more time back into the pivot table so that I see the menu choice for pivot table analyze. And these slicer buttons that I'm about to create need to call on the year and the month, but you'll notice that I don't yet have uh, a, an option for year or month. I do have one for date. So here's how we need to get those into Excel. Uh, Excel is going to kind of help us in this in a moment. Okay, so I'm just going to temporarily drag this date uh, here into one of these boxes. I'm going to drag it down to rows and you'll notice uh, what will happen here in a moment. So I'm going to click drag date down and let go. And suddenly, you know, it shows up uh, all these uh, years under there. And, uh, and that has now automatically created options for month, quarters, and years, which is pretty handy. Um, except I no longer want it in there, so I'm just now just going to uncheck uh, each of those things. You notice it also now has the individual dates, so I'm going to actually scroll up to the top there and also uncheck date. So now our pivot table looks back to normal, but I have gained these new options for months, quarters, and years. And, uh, you know, of course, one of the things I, I might opt to do is drag years, have it maybe above category. So I see the little green line appearing there. And when I click and hold down, you know, it has has added uh, years to there. Uh, unfortunately, because I had turned off the plus and minus buttons, that's why I'm not actually seeing the, the details. So, I, you know, again, that's, that's an option if you like that. Uh, but I think the slicer buttons are just much better way uh, to do to do this. So I'm going to click off that plus minus buttons and uh, uncheck years. And we're now going to insert a first slicer. So we'll click on that insert slicer button. And it wants to know, well, what field do we want this slicer to reference or use? So we're going to click on years, click OK. And we suddenly got this uh, slicer button. And we're just going to clean it up a little bit. So uh, first thing I like to do is a, uh, is a right click on this thing. So if I right click with my mouse, there's a pop up here for slicer settings. And I, you know, I'd like it to just simply say the word years, not years, date. So here for the display header caption, we're just going to backspace up so that it only says, shows years. 
and we're also going to tell it to hide items with no data. So we're going to click on that hide items with no data checkbox and click OK. Okay, now these uh, slicer buttons can also uh, be colored. So while we're here on the slicer, you also see this drop down menu right there. And so we can pick out, you know, just a, f a favorite um, color choice right there. And I'm also going to uh, grab this here by this middle area and just, you know, shrink it down a little bit. And then as long as I, I, I want to drag it over to the left. So as long as my arrow is that four way arrow, if I click hold down, I can now drag it over to here. Okay. So our end result, I'm going to scroll back up in my spreadsheet. The end result is that I now have buttons I can click. So I clicked on 2024 and this is showing you just the categorization of that for that year. If I click on 2025, it's now just categorization for that year. You got this little button up here for clearing the filter. And then now we're back to seeing everything. Okay, the other thing I like to do is if I if you click on this slicer, you get those little handles, and I'm going to click on this bottom one here, click, hold down, and just uh, make that a little bit smaller. And we're going to add another slicer. So as long as I click once in the pivot table, go back to pivot table, analyze. Again, we're going to click to insert another slicer. And this time it will be on months. So we'll click on months. Okay, that. And there we've got uh, this months uh, slicer. Okay, once again, we're going to repeat that process. We've done a little bit of cleanup. So if I again do a right click, I'll see that choice here for slicer settings. Under slicer settings, I'm just going to clean this up here on this uh, caption. Have it just say the word months. Again, hide items with no data. Click OK. And again, I might pick out just a, a favorite color style uh, for this. And see, it doesn't need to be quite this wide. So if I grab it right there on the side, shrink it up a little bit and and then grab it and drag it over here you know we're now uh, starting to build out our uh, slicer controls to look uh, pretty nice okay what we need to do now is add one for income um, now before i do that i did want to mention that when you click your cursor into a pivot table under the pivot table analyze menu uh, is a place where you can say you know what the name of that pivot table is so on your spreadsheet, it might come up and say pivot table one, pivot table two, uh, but you can definitely change these. And, and I'm just going to call this one uh, expenses and then hit the enter key. Uh, so it's now named that pivot table expenses. And you'll see why that's kind of handy uh, that I did that in a moment. But next, we're going to go back to this register one worksheet. And this is kind of good practice. Uh, we're going to add another pivot table. So as long as my mouse is somewhere in this register one sheet and we go back to the insert menu we're going to click on this pivot table button up here but we're going to make one little change and this time instead of it having go to a new worksheet we're going to tell that we want it to go to an existing worksheet and it wants to know the location so i've all i've done right so far is just clicked on that radio button for existing worksheet i'm going to click down to this this sheet one because that's where our brand new pivot table is and i'm going to click my mouse right there so it's kind of a skipping one empty column and we're just going to have it kind of line up with the existing one and click the OK button okay so now we've got a empty pivot table notice it's calling it pivot table four uh, so eh, while I'm thinking about it I'm going to go ahead and click on this little drop down right, right there where it says pivot table four and click in there and call this one income and press enter and for our income pivot table uh, this time we are still going to do uh, kind of a repeat. We're going to start off by dragging category down to the row area. And, and instead of dragging withdrawal, we're going to drag deposit to the values area. So now we've got the uh, deposits uh, showing up. And if you recall, we're also going to tweak the way that's worded and formatted. So if we click on that little drop down arrow right there, we'll see that choice for value field settings under value field settings we're going to change this custom name to say uh, income and uh, again I'm going to use this number format button to pick my preferred number format of currency and click OK and OK and also to match what we did with expenses we're going to go to this design menu 
and pick out a preferred color. Again, I'm going to pick this one. And I realize that I, uh, you know, I actually forgot to put my subcategories in here, right? So uh, we're going to go back over here and grab subcategory, hold down, drag underneath category, let go. And there we've got our subcategories. And we're going to go back to pivot table analyze. And I'm going to uh, turn off those plus minus buttons and turn off the field headers starting to look uh, very similar to the other. Uh, but yeah, we still got a more, a little more cleanup to do. If you remember, we added a filter to this one. So if I click over here, you know, you see that you know, we added a filter called type to this one. So we're going to click back over to this pivot table and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to go scroll down, find that type column, drag it down, let go into the filters box. And then where it says type all, we're going to click up there, choose income. Okay. And now that pivot table is strictly focused on income. Okay. And it's part of some additional cleanup. As long as my cursor somewhere in that pivot table up under the design choice, that's where we can find that blank row setting. And I'm going to tell it to insert blank lines just to make it a little, little easier to read. Okay. Now the slicer buttons that we added earlier, notice that when I click those, well, it's only changing the expense pivot table, right? So how do we get these slicers to also do the same for income? Well, as long as we've clicked on one of these slicers, we can click, we can go to, to the slicer menu and there's a button for report connections. Uh, you, you, know, you can also get to that with a right click, do a right click and just choose report connections. Uh, either way was, is gonna work, but under report connections, here's where we tell that we'd like that slicer to control uh, the income and the expenses pivot tables. So we'll click OK. I'm going to click on this one, do the same thing, go to report connections, and also check mark the income pivot table. So after doing so, we'll now see that our buttons are changing both. Now, I hope this was helpful for you. Again, learning about spreadsheets uh, it can be a really handy thing. And if you found this basic checkbook, uh, beneficial uh, to you. you know, I do want to mention that, of course, I have a website where I have uh, uh, other sp uh, checkbook spreadsheets available. Uh, the most recent version of 2025 adds uh, quite a lot of functionality beyond what you have in the basic uh, checkbook. Uh, you see a summary of the features here at the website called excel-checkbook.com. So if you'd like to have a checkbook register spreadsheet that can support uh, up to 10 different bank accounts uh, that's available. And here's where uh, this particular version also builds on what, what you just did uh, with uh, additional slicers for uh, seeing income, expenses, uh, different registers, uh, etc. So again, thanks for, for watching. Hope you uh, like and subscribe and I hope you excel at your finances.